Hey guys, Sobro Neo GNA Reviews here with another event guide, this time for the upcoming Super Ghost and Pumpkins event in FGO NA. Just like with all my event guides, this is going to be super in-depth, covering everything from the new event servants all the way into in-depth farming strategies. So if you take a look at the description below, I have timestamps to the different sections of the video, so you can skip ahead to whatever part of the video you need the most. The only other thing I do want to mention about this event before we get into it is that in order to participate in this event, you have to have cleared Orleans. That is the second chapter of the game. So once you've cleared Orleans, you'll be able to participate in the event. But with that out of the way, let's start with the event servants. We'll be getting three brand new servants with this event. One welfare and two are going to be available in the gacha. Starting off with the welfare first, we have Elizabeth Bathory Brave. She is a four star saber with a max attack of 9,899 and a max HP of 11,248. She is a very strong offensive saber, so for those of you who need an offensive saber, and she is again going to be the free servant with this event, so there is no reason to not pick her up. But I do have a full spotlight on her, as well as the other two servants linked in the description below, so if you want a closer analysis, make sure you check that out, and I'll also link it at the end of the video. Next up, we have the first of the gacha servants, Cleo. Cleopatra is a 5 star assassin with a max attack of 11,088 and a max HP of 13,402. She has a Buster AoE Noble Phantasm. Again, I do have a full spotlight on her linked in the description below, but suffice it to say she is one of the better assassin class servants, especially if you need some kind of really powerful offensive assassin that can fill multiple roles. And it's also worth mentioning that she is a limited servant, so she will not be in the gacha after this event. And finally, we have Vlad III. He is a 4-star Lancer with a max attack of 8,775 and a max HP of 13,005. He has a single target Buster Noble Phantasm, so if you do need a good Lancer, I do suggest rolling for him. And the good thing about him is he will be part of the permanent gacha pool even after the event. And those are going to be the three new servants we're getting, so let's talk about the craft essences. And with this event, we're going to be getting six new craft essences. Three are going to be available in the gacha, and the other three are going to be available for purchase in the event shop. Let's cover the gacha craft essences first. First up, we have the three star craft essence, Count Romani Archimonde's Hospitality. It increases your NP gain by 5% and your defense by 3%. It also increases the sack of bronze drops by 1%. And if you limit break it, it will increase your Noble Phantasm gain by 10%, your defense by 5%, and the Bronze Sack drops by 2 This is a good budget option for defensive Noble Phantasm spamming servants like Mosh, George, and Leonidas. Next up, we have the 4-star Gacha Craft Essence, Witch of the Moonlit Knight. It increases Arch Card effectiveness by 10% and NP gain by 5%. It will also increase the drops of the Silver Sacks by 1. If you Limit Break it, it's going to increase Arch Card effectiveness by 15%, NP gain by 10%, and Silver Sack drops by 2. This is a very good alternative to Divine Banquet for more offensive art spam servants who want to duel a lot of extra damage. So it's very nice for servants like Saber Lancelot or Shuten. And finally, we have the 5 star Gacha Craft Essence, Dangerous Beast. It increases crit card effectiveness by 15% and you gain 3 crit stars per turn. You'll also increase the gold sack drops by 1. If you limit break it, it's going to increase your quick card effectiveness by 20%, you'll gain 4 crit stars per turn, and increase gold sack drops by 2. Now this is a very strong craft essence, it's perfect for quick servants that need to generate crit stars like Okita, Jack, and Ku prototype. And moving on to the shop craft essences, we have the 3 star craft essence Matahari's Tavern. It increases quick art and buster strength by 2%. It will also increase crit strength by 5%. And for this event, it's going to increase insect and golem appearance rates by 25%. If you limit break it, it's going to increase your quick art and buster card effectiveness by 3% and your critical strength by 10% and it will increase your insect and golem appearances by 100%. This is a cost effective small scale buff. It is really nice on Emiya because of his split deck and it also gives him crit damage which helps him a lot. Next up we have the 4 star shop craft essence wizard and priest. This will increase your noble phantasm strength by 15% and your HP recovery amount by 10%. It will also increase your skeleton Ghost and Lamia appearance rates by 25% for the event. 
If you limit break it, it's going to increase NP strength by 20%, HP recovery by 20%, and skeleton, ghost, and Lamia appearance rate by 100%. This is good for tanky servants with heals, so servants that have Imperial Privilege, and good Noble Phantasms, so servants like Nursery Rhyme, Nero Bride, Regular Nero, Cleopatra, and Ozymandias all benefit greatly from this Craft Essence. And finally, we have the 5-star Craft Essence, Brave Hero Ellie Chan's Quest. This will increase your Buster Card effectiveness by 10% and your NP Strength by 20%. Will also increase the appearance of werewolf, homunculi, and night enemies by 25%. And if you limit break it, it's going to increase your buster card effectiveness by 15%, your NP strength by 25%, and increase the werewolf, homunculi, and night appearances by 100%. This is a tremendously strong craft essence on pretty much any buster servant with a strong noble phantasm. So I highly encourage trying to limit break this craft essence and farming the event for that fifth copy. Speaking of which, let's talk about the event shop. So this event shop is going to be no different from any other. There's going to be three different types of currencies, bronze sacks, silver sacks, and gold sacks. The bronze sacks will trade in for five copies of Mataharu's Tavern, one dragon orb, which is going to be the ascension item for Brave Liz. You can also trade them in for magic lamps, dragon fangs, bows, four star and three star EXP, and attack and HP foes. The silver sacks will trade in for five copies of Wizard and Priest, as well as another Dragon Orb, Hearts of a Foreign God, Black Tar Pots, Snake Jewels, Lances, Cloaks, and Mana Prisms. And finally, the gold sacks will trade in for four copies of Brave Ellie Chan's Quest, the final two Dragon Orbs, a Crystal Lore, Scarab of Wisdom, Bloodstone Tears, Phoenix Plumes, swords and shields. If you do want to buy everything in the shop, it's going to cost you 6,400 bronze sacks, 6,200 silver sacks, and 5,900 gold sacks. However, if you do not want any of the event boosting items, aka the sword, the shield, the lance, and the cloak, then you're only going to need 5,800 copper sacks, 5,000 silver sacks, and 4,700 gold sacks. And again, that's only if you don't plan on buying the sword, shield, cloak, bow, or spear, which are not necessary. I also want to point out that you have enough copies of the three star and four star craft essence available in the shop to limit break them. However, there's only four copies of Brave Ellie Chan's quest. So if you want to limit break that, you're going to have to farm the event for the fifth copy. So now let's talk about those items I just mentioned, the sword and shield and all of that. So the very interesting gimmick for this event is going to be that there are additional bonus items that you can farm from the different stages in free quests or that you can buy from the shop. There is going to be a sword, a spear, a bow, a cape, and a shield. Now these items are going to function pretty similar to the different colored beans that we had for the Onigashima event. They're going to be selectable before a battle. You can pick which one of these you want to use after you pick your team. And if you use one, they give you different effects. When you go into battle with a sword, it's going to increase your party's buster card effectiveness. If you go in with a spear, it's going to increase your quick card effectiveness for the whole party. If you go in with a bow, it's going to increase your arts card effectiveness for the whole party. Again, extremely similar to how the beans worked in Onigashima. Additionally, there's going to be the cape, which is going to power up your entire party's noble phantasm damage and the shield, which is going to give everyone on your party three hit invincibility. Now, the interesting thing about these items, however, is that they're very much unnecessary unless you're very new to the game. If you've been playing for a few months, you probably won't even need to use any of these items, aka you don't need to buy them from the shop and you can completely ignore them. However, they are good because they're a way of allowing newer players to participate in this event. So even if you've just started playing this month or last month, you should be able to clear this event easily with these upgrade power items. Everyone else need not apply, but they are there for you to use. In addition to those booster items, you also have servants that have bonus damage for this event. 
Brave Liz is going to have an attack strength increase of 100%, so she's going to be dealing double damage for this event. While Robin Hood, Ibaraki, Nidokris, Cleopatra, and Vlad are going to be dealing 50% extra damage for this event. So those are going to be the only bonus servants, but that's going to be the only real unique thing about this event. There's no point ladder or raid or anything like that. There are challenge quests, which we'll talk about a little bit later. For now, let's talk about the story. So the story for this event is going to be pretty long. There's going to be 15 story sections, but like I mentioned, it's not going to be very difficult. In fact, if you were able to clear Septum, this should be no problem for you. The one great thing about this event is going to be you're going to get a holy grail for completing it. So I encourage everyone to try and finish this event at least the event story because holy grails are incredibly rare and incredibly important so make sure you don't miss out on that and at least finish the story now the quests are going to be time locked new story quests are going to appear every day for five days so the first set of story quests are going to be available on day one then you're going to have to wait 24 hours for the second set and so on and so forth for five whole days. So you really can't rush through the event. You're gonna to have to at least wait five days before the entire story finishes. So you can take your time with it. Once you beat a story quest in a given area, it's going to unlock free quests, the usual case for farming. And like I mentioned, it's not a difficult story mode. I recommend having servants around level 50, but because of those items that I just mentioned earlier, the cape and all of that, it's very doable even with servants at lower levels than that. You do get the temporary Brave Liz on day two after you complete the second story quest. So you won't get your Brave Liz right away. You have to wait until day two when you beat those story missions. When you beat all 15 story missions, then you're going to unlock Brave Liz permanently. So she's only going to be temporary until you beat the 15 story missions. You also get other things from beating the story. You're going to unlock the new Demon King difficulty. So very similar to Summer where you beat the story, it unlocks a new difficulty mode in all the free quests. The Demon King difficulty is going to be the hardest difficulty for the free quests. It's also going to be the best spot to farm for the shop items. It's going to be recommended level 90 and it's going to be 40 AP. We'll touch on it in the farming section but that means you shouldn't be farming until you finish the story. So save all your farming until at least day five. In addition to that, once you beat the 15 story quest, you're also going to unlock the challenge quest. We'll touch on that too, but the challenge quest is going to be how you unlock the extra copies of Brave Liz to upgrade her noble phantasm. There isn't much else to say about the story other than that. Uh, as far as recommended servants go, you're definitely going to need strong knight class servants. So you're going to need a strong lancer, a strong archer, and a strong saber. I recommend Ku, Robin, David, Uriel, and for your saber, definitely invest in Brave Liz. She's great for this event. If you don't have time to invest in Brave Liz, then go ahead and use Caesar or Fergus. You're also going to need a caster to take down some assassin bosses. So make sure you have a media or caster Liz to do some damage. And if all else fails, as always, Kyohime and Lubu are perfect for everything. So let's talk about how we're gonna approach farming for this event. Funny enough, this is going to be one of the easier, more straightforward events to farm for, despite how complicated it might look. So first off, do not bother farming until you beat the story mode, until you beat all 15 story quests on day five and unlock that Demon King difficulty. Reason why is because the Demon King difficulty is going to be the hardest free quest difficulty and it's going to give you the most items. So it doesn't make sense from an efficiency standpoint to farm and waste your AP beforehand, or at least don't waste any apples farming. And the first thing you're gonna wanna do when you start the event is you're gonna wanna roll the friend point gacha and try to get as many of those three star craft essences as possible. And you're gonna prioritize getting the craft essences from the shop first. Before anything else, get those event craft essences from the shop. That way you can limit break them right away. 
the way that these craft essences work is going to be similar to Kara no Kyokai in that the different craft essences will correspond to different types of enemies. For example, if you have the Matahari craft essence equipped, then if you go to a stage with insects or golems, you're going to have a 25% chance of getting double the amount of those enemies in that stage, which makes it a lot more efficient for farming. If you max limit break it, however, it's going to be a 100% chance. That's why it's going to be super priority to max limit break these shop craft essences right away as soon as possible. I should also mention that you cannot go over 100%. So if you have, for example, five of these craft essences equipped, you're not going to get a 125% bonus. It caps out at 100%. So all you're ever going to need is one max limit broken copy in your party and that's it. That's going to be your shop craft essences. The gacha craft essences are going to increase the drop rates of the different shop items. So the gold, bronze, and silver sacks. They don't affect the enemies or anything like that. They just increase the drop rates of the items. So you do not want to limit break those. Keep those separate. Your ideal team comp is going to be one max limit broken shop craft essence and five gacha craft essences that maximize the drops. Now with that out of the way, there's going to be two different ways of farming this event. One is going to be to farm each item individually. So farming bronze sacks, then farming silver sacks, then farming gold sacks. The last way or the other way to do it is to farm them all at once. So bronze sacks, the best place to farm them is going to be in the Snowfield free quest on the 40 AP Demon King difficulty. You're going to want to equip a copy of your hero Ellie Chan's adventure and the three star gacha craft essence, the Count Romani hospitality. You're going to be facing a lot of lancers in this quest, so you're going to want to bring sabers to counteract them. Brave Liz is especially good here. The silver sacks are going to be farmed in the Magma Cavern free quest in the Demon King difficulty. You're going to want to bring a copy of Matahari's Tavern to increase the spawn rate of enemies, and you're going to want copies of your Witch Under the Moonlight craft essence from the Gacha, which will increase the drops of the silver sacks. Make sure you bring an assassin here to take care of the dragon that's going to be in the area. And then finally, to farm gold sacks, you're going to want to farm them at the Castle Gate free quest. In the Demon King difficulty, you're going to want a copy of your Wizards and Priest craft essence to increase the spawn rates. And you're going to want the Dangerous Beast craft essence from the Gacha if you have it, which will increase the gold sack drop rate. You definitely need to bring riders here to counter all the caster enemies and you're going to want brave liz or some kind of other really strong saber because you're going to have to face vlad as your final boss here lancer vlad so you're going to need a saber and you're going to need riders that's if you're going to farm them all individually if you don't have any of the event craft essences from the gacha then you can choose to farm all the items at once you're going to be doing that in the pyramid stage you're going to want to bring your Brave Ellie Chan Craft Essence, which is going to increase the spawn rate of all the knights in the pyramid. And you're going to want to bring sabers to counter all those knights because they're going to be Lancer class. And you're going to want to bring an assassin because you're also going to be facing off against Ozymandias and a Sphinx. So two different riders. Now I only suggest doing this method, the pyramid method, if you do not have any of the gacha craft essences. It's kind of a way of farming as much as possible, knowing that you won't be able to buy out everything in the shop. If you do have event craft essences from the gacha, then do the first method. Farm bronze, silver, and gold items individually. If you're unable to do the Demon King difficulty for whatever reason, then go to whatever difficulty you can do. And if you're going to be farming for the fifth copy of your Brave Liz craft essence, then make sure you do it either at the Pyramid, the Magma Cavern, or the Forest. Those are the only three stages that drop Hero Ellie Chan Craft Essence. So again, if you want to limit break that Brave Hero Ellie Chan Craft Essence, you need to farm it either at the Pyramid, the Magma Cavern, or the Forest. So with those out of the way, let's talk about the Challenge Quest. 
So the other major thing about this event is going to be the challenge quest. These are going to be unlocked after you finish the story missions, aka after you beat the 15 missions on day 5. Each area is going to have four different challenge quests in them. Now, I want to get it out of the way that this is nothing like Nero Fest. These are not even really challenge quests. They're pretty much just regular missions with a few restrictions in each one. And within that area is going to be four different quests that are called challenge quests that you have to complete. Completing these challenge quests is going to be how you're going to unlock Brave Liz's extra Noble Phantasm copies as well as the crystal lore and a bunch of other things like skill gems and mana prisms. So the first area is the graveyard. For these challenge quests, you can only use female servants and this is going to be the list of the female servants that you can use. The second area is going to be the opposite of that. The village is going to be males only. So you can only use male servants in the village challenge quests. Next up, we have the forest. And the forest restriction is going to be only Western servants. So no servants from Asia. And this is the list of servants that you can use in the forest challenge quest. Next up, we have the cavern. And the restriction here is going to be no royalty. So no kings and no queens. And this is going to be the list of servants you can use for those challenge quests. Next up, we have the Tundra. The restriction for the Tundra is going to be Da Vinci's selection. So only the servants chosen by Da Vinci. This is going to be the list of those servants. Next up, we have the Magma Cavern. The restriction for the Magma Cavern is only servants that are less than 165 centimeters. So only short servants. And here's the list of those servants. Next is the Castle Gates. The restriction here is going to be FGO only servants. So going to be only servants that have debuted within FGO. And then finally, the pyramid challenge quest, you can only use righteous people or righteous servants. And this is the list of those servants. I'm not going to go too in depth into each mission and what you should be using because it's very straightforward. There's no enemies that have super buffs or anything like that. It's just a regular free quest with a restriction that limits the amount of servants you can bring. That's it. And I would recommend being around level 70 to take these challenge quests on. They're not difficult. Even if you're level 60 or 50, you can do these challenge quests if you use those special booster items. Also, I should note that if you do want to get those extra copies of Liz, you're going to need to beat the challenge quest in the cavern, the tundra, the magma cave, and the castle gate. Those are going to be the four challenge quest areas that will reward you with the extra copies of Brave Liz so you can get her to NP5. The pyramid will reward you with a crystallized lore. The other areas are going to reward you with mana prisms and skill gems. So it is definitely worth it to do these challenge quests. Finally, let's talk a bit about ascension mat farming. So just like with all events, there's going to be a few places that are worth farming for the ascension material drops. So this infographic is going to point out exactly where those areas are. And this infographic comes courtesy of Lord Ashura from his guide. I have that linked in the description below. So make sure you check it out and show him some love. He puts a lot of effort into these guides. I also have a link down below to his Patreon so you can donate to him if you appreciate it. So big thanks to Lord Ashura. Now for ascension farming, the graveyard is going to have bicorn horns and phoenix plumes. Notice that the phoenix plumes are going to be a 77% drop rate. And by the way, this is going to apply to the Demon King difficulty on all of these areas. So it's only applying to the Demon King free quest. So if you do need phoenix plumes, make sure you farm the graveyard. I know I will. The castle district is going to have a 92% drop rate for bones and a 17% drop rate for red bloodstone tears. The forest is going to have a 48% drop rate for Yudriso Seeds, 29% for the Black Tar Pots. Cavern is going to have 15% drop rate for Spirit Roots and a 72% drop rate for the Ghost Lanterns. The Snow Field is going to have a 70% Homunculi Baby drop rate and a 21% Talon drop rate. The Magma Cavern is going to have a 65% Octuplet Crystal drop rate and a 16% Reverse Dragon Scale drop rate. The Castle Gate is going to have Snake Eye Gems that drop at a rate of 70% 
and Hearts of a Foreign God that drop at a 15% rate. And finally, the Pyramid is going to have Scarabs that drop at a rate of 16%, and Night Metals that drop at 45%. So if you need any of these Ascension Materials, that's going to be where you want to farm them at. And that wraps up pretty much everything I have to say about this event. It's not a really terrible event, it's actually pretty straightforward and easy to take care of. Don't be afraid of those challenge quests, and make sure if you are newer to the game, you do use those unique booster items. They will help a lot. If you don't need them, then don't use them. You can sell them at the end of the event for some extra QP. And do make sure you get that Grail and that you get Brave Liz. And if you want to see a more in-depth analysis on her, as well as Cleopatra or Lancer Vlad, so you know if you want to roll for them or not, make sure you check the description. There's going to be a link to their spotlights down there, where I go into much greater detail. Again, thanks to Lord Ashura for that infographic. Make sure you show him some love by checking out his guide as well. Link in the description. And if this video did help and you enjoyed it, make sure you hit that like button. It helps a lot. And if you do want to see more content, make sure you subscribe and ring the bell so that you know when I have content on the way. If you haven't already, make sure you follow us on Twitter, follow us on Twitch, and join the party over at our Discord as well. And I will see you all in the next Servant Spotlight or Event Guide. So we're only out. Later.